أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس ضرب مثل فس تَمِعُوا لَهُ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَن يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا تَمَعُوا لَهُ وَإِنْ يَسْلُبَهُمُ الذُّبَابُ شَيْئًا لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُوهُ مِنْهُ ضَعُفَ الطَّالِبُ وَالْمَطْلُوبُ مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقْ قدره إن الله لقوي عزيز بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى من استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه وسار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today's we'll be looking at Allah's names Al Qawi and Al Mateen. Power. The one word that everybody wants today. Every nation wants power over their dictator. Today the woman wants power over the man in the marriage. The young want power over the old, the small wants power over the large. Everybody today is seeking it. Whether it's political power, whether it's financial power, whether it's nuclear power, whether it's sustainable power, everybody wants power. And today we are going to talk about the source of all power, the giver and the taker of power, Al-Qawi. Allah's name Al-Qawi comes from the word in Arabic, or the root letters, Quwa. Al Quwa in Arabic, which refers to strength. So the Arabs would call someone Qawi if they had more than average strength in some faculty. So let's say Sajjad here is very intelligent, high IQ, inshallah. More IQ, higher IQ, more intelligence than the average person. The Arabs would call him Qawi al Aql. Strong of mind. If you find someone who has bodily strength, yes, someone who goes to the gym regularly, I can't see any of them here. <laughs> Nor can I see them in the mirror. But if we find someone like that, we call them Qawiyul Badan, someone strong of body. Now maybe we have one or two here, inshallah. Strong of body, because their bodily strength is more than average. The ability to get things done, the ability to do what they intend. So for instance, you know, somebody wants to lift some furniture. They intend to lift the furniture. They want to lift this furniture. But because of their weakness, they cannot fulfill their intention. They are stuck. This is called da'if, weak. So weakness and strength depends on are you able to do what you intend to do? Whether it's physically, whether it's financially, whether it's politically, all of this comes back to the word strength, al quwa in Arabic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Qawi. He is the greatest source of strength and He is the strongest, the most powerful. Today, a lot of us struggle and we feel, Muslims specifically and especially, we feel weakened, we feel weak. After hundreds of years of colonialism in Muslim countries, in Egypt, in Algeria, Morocco, Somalia, India, Pakistan, so many countries, Muslim countries, 
of course with the exception of India, which is not a Muslim country, but has a huge Muslim population. The Muslims face hundreds of years of weakness and today, Muslims feel weak, they feel small, they feel inferior. And the mindset that this name of Allah Al-Qawi, it gives you inner strength. Because you know that behind you is the greatest power. I want to draw for you a picture for you to understand the effect of this name on the lives of the Sahaba. Today, most of us, we suffer from a inferiority complex. That means we feel small in comparison to the West because they have more machines and more engineering and more business and we are weak and we are less because we don't have science and we're far behind. So Muslims feel weak in front of their opposition, in front of those who are apparently greater than them. And because of this, we start to compromise in our deen. We say, you know what, let's edit this hukum of Allah. No, actually, Islam is not about this, it's about this. We, we start to change and tweak and edit Islam because we feel weak. I want to show you, tell you a story. A man by the name of Rabi'i ibn Amr, rahimahullah, from one of the earliest generations of Muslims. Rabi'i ibn Amr, radiyallahu anhu, he enters into the palace of Rustam. Anybody know which empire he belonged to? The Persian Empire. And anybody who reads history will tell you the greatest empire in human history was not the Roman Empire. It was the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire was the greatest, most advanced empire in all of human history. Anybody who wants to read further, there's an 800 page book called The Silk Road. You can read it, it's by a recent historian. It proves this idea. The Persian Empire was the greatest, most sophisticated empire in history. And Rustum uh, and Rabi ibn Amr is sent by the Muslimin to go and invite Rustum to Islam. Rabi ibn Amr is a Bedouin from the Arab desert. He doesn't have fancy clothing, branded clothing. He doesn't have a big army. By himself, he walks into the palace of Rustum. People walk into the palace of Rustum usually with their head bowed because out of submission for the king. But, Rust, but Rabi'i ibn Amir walks in with his head up high and he refuses to bow for anyone. He walks in with his head up high. And the emperor Rustum begins, begins to make fun of him. He says, what brought you out of the desert, you Arabs who eat lizard meat? What brought you to my grand civilization? So Rabi ibn Amr says to him, "Jina al ibad." We came to remove the slaves, min ibadat al ibad, from the worship of other slaves, ila ibadat rabb al ibad, to become worshippers of the Lord of the slaves. Wa min jawr al adyan ila sa'at al rahman, and from the harshness of human-made religion to the beauty and mercy of Allah's religion. Look at the pride with which he holds his identity. Look at the power with which he speaks to power. Why? Where is the confidence coming from? Where is that strength coming from? Today as Muslims we make so many compromises because we feel weak. Because we think we need an army, we need a political party, we need funding. So we will tweak and change the message of Islam so we can get some power from this earth. This is a lone man walking into a palace of a huge empire. He has no army, he has no money, he has nothing. But he has one thing. He is standing and he knows that Allah is behind him. Allah is supporting him. Al-Qawi, the source and the greatest of all powers is Allah. And this allowed him to have so much confidence that it doesn't matter who he's talking to, he will be there with his head held high, with the position of strength, not the position of weakness. And this is why he could speak to Rustum, this emperor of Persia, as though he's nobody. Because for him, he only fears Allah. And his power is Allah. He felt in his mind as though there's a big army behind him. Because Allah is, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is supporting him. This is the effect of Allah's name, al qawi that we as Muslims will come out of this complex of being small and inferior and we're behind and we're low and we will realize that we are the slaves of the most almighty, the greatest power of all. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses his name Al-Qawi or he uses the word Qawi, strength, to describe as a positive way to describe some of his slaves in the Quran. So this name, Al-Qawi, the most powerful is for Allah. But Qawi has been used for other than Allah as well, as positive thing. Who can tell me who has been described in the Quran as Qawi, strong? Jibril. So what was Jibril described as? Okay, the jinn. Yes, one of the jinn was described in the Quran as Qawiyun Amin, strong and trustworthy. One of the jinn in the army of Sulaiman And Jibril was called hmm? Musa salam. Who called him Qawi? Yes, the Yes, the daughter of, as some scholars say, Shu'ib alayhi salam. She said, Inna khayra man al al amin. One of the best people you can employ is someone strong and trustworthy. Musa alayhi salam is strong. And Jibreel alayhi salam, ذي قوة عند ذي العرش مكين. Allah calls him one of power. Jibreel alayhi salam is powerful. Anybody else? These are some examples. Musa alayhi salam, the jinn, and Jibreel alayhi salam in the Quran. These are all people who have power. Which tells you Allah gives power to others as well. Allah is the source of power. And that being strong is not a bad thing. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-Mu'minu al-Qawi, the strong believer, khayrun wa ahabbu ila Allah min al-Mu'min al-Da'if, better and more closer to and more beloved to Allah than the weak believer. Wa fihi ma khayr, even though both of them have some good in them. I want to come to you with an example that Allah gives in the Quran. Allah says, the verses I recited in the beginning. O oh people, Allah has given you an example, so listen carefully to it. Those who you call other than Allah, they could not create a fly even if they all gathered together to create a fly. And if the fly took away something from them, they couldn't take it back from him. How weak is the seeker and how weak is what they are seeking? People did not appreciate Allah, his due appreciation Indeed, Allah is Qawi, the ultimately strong, and Aziz, the dominating. What does this example mean? And how does it apply to us today? Yes, tell me. Uh, he's saying that uh, you think like they can do everything, mm -hmm. and they have power, but then the, uh, the most power, mm. and Allah is the only person. Beautiful, mashallah. Anybody else? Yes. Mm. Beautiful, mashallah. So we have two points here. In this example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving a challenge. Those that you call and you make dua to other than Allah, whether they're idols, whether they're people, whether they're dead people, alive people, it doesn't matter. Allah is saying, could they create a fly? And a fly is an example for the smallest and the most weakest, we think, the weakest of Allah's creation. If all of these idols and all of these people came together, they could not create a single fly. And if the fly took something from them, imagine when a fly comes and lands on your shoulder. And we all know that a fly sucks. It sucks your blood from your skin, from, your, from you. And it goes, you cannot go and retrieve that blood. It's not happening. <laughs> You might go and squash the fly, but the blood's not going to become accessible to you. And so, if people are so weak, and, and what we think is powerful, whether it's idols, whether it's machines, whether it's companies, whether it's governments, if none of them all together could create a single fly, how weak are they in comparison with Allah, the all-powerful? Imagine, this is another example, covid a creation of Allah, a virus which is not even seen to the human eye, so small. It's not seeable, you cannot see it with the human eye. But it brought down nations to their knees. It killed populations. Those who accept that it, there was actually a thing called COVID. Yes? It killed entire populations. This is the qudra and the quwa of Allah. He reminds us from the smallest of his creation, from the dhubaba, the fly, to show us we are nothing. 
and we are weak and he humbles us. Human beings, they always think they can do everything. Especially when they think there is no God, there is no creator. When they created the Titanic, they said the ship will never sink. When they created the spacecraft, they said this will never stop flying. And all of it came crashing down. Yes, Habib. The king of Persia, Namrud, he defied Allah, he brought an army. Mm. Subhanallah, the arrows were like when. Mm. So he said, "I'm the most powerful now." And then Subhanallah, the mosquito came into his ear. Yeah. And he died after like 400. <laughs> Subhanallah, his brothers mentioned the yes, the story of Nimrud. As many historians narrate that Nimrud, the tyrant who. Famously faced off with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Alam tara illa alladhi hajja Ibrahim fi rabbihi. He debated and he fought with Ibrahim alayhi salam and he was a big tyrant. Many, many historians say that he died through a mosquito. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brings down the biggest tyrants with the smallest of things, the weakest of creation, to remind and to humble the human beings when they overestimate themselves. This is the meaning of his words. Ma qadaru allaha haqqa qadarih. You did not give Allah the estimation, the esteem, the rank that He deserved. You thought too big of yourselves. Allah's name Al-Qawi gives us humility. But I'm going to ask you all a question. If Allah is Al-Qawi, the most powerful, why is it that Allah does not give power to the Muslims, those who are worshipping Him and those who are devoted to Him, and they are today the weakest of people on the earth. Why does he not make them the kings of the world and the powerful of the world? Yes. Same question, Jubil asked Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You want to be a king, prophet, or you want to be Okay, he's saying that the believers have chosen the lower hand in this dunya for the higher hand in the akhirah. Anybody else? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful, mashallah. So a young man is saying that being rich itself, you could be tested by richness. Being wealthy could lead you to disbelief. So it's not always a good thing. Yes. Okay. Beautiful, mashallah. He's saying the verse of Allah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You are the best of people taken out for mankind. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof, you command the good and you forbid the wrong. That's the thing that makes you special, not wealth and not industry, etc. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, Sheikh. Uh -huh. Allah, Dr. Muhammad is saying that given, being given victory and power from Allah, Allah gave us a condition. In Allah yansurkum. Only if you give Nusra, you support and serve Allah, He will then give you Nusra, the victory. And maybe we are not fulfilling those conditions. Yes, Harry. Okay. Hmm. Jamil, okay, it's a beautiful point that in times of weakness, it becomes more clear who are the committed Muslims and who aren't. Because you are not in a position of strength and luxury, you're a position of weakness. So whoever stays committed are the committed ones. Okay, we'll take one more, yes. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful istidlal. Very good. What's your name? 
Ahmed. Everybody, may Allah make Ahmed from the ulama. Say Amin. Amin Rabbil Alameen. And all of us and all of our children. Amin Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah, beautiful. He's taken from the ayah where Allah says, Wa'ad Allahu alladhina amanu minkum wa amilu salihat. Allah promised those who believed and who did good deeds, la yastakhlifannahum fil ard. He will make them leaders on this earth. But maybe we have not fulfilled the iman and the, and the good deeds to be given that promise. MashaAllah, all of you have made good points. But there is a point before that. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He governs this world with laws. I'm sitting on this chair because of the law of, of gravity. If not for gravity, maybe I would be floating somewhere. And then that would not be, you know, Sufi harakat. That would be no gravity. Okay, like if you go to space. This world is governed by laws. There are physical laws. There are biological laws. There are chemical laws. It's how this world works. And there are some laws that are not to do with physics and chemistry. Allah's sunnah on this earth. Allah has sunan. He has certain ways in which this earth runs. One of the sunnahs of Allah is that there will always be a fight between good and evil. There will always be a fight between good and evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, الذين أخرجوا من ديارهم بغير حق إلا أن يقولوا ربنا الله. Those who were removed from their households only because they said our Lord is Allah. ولولا دفع الله الناس بعضهم ببعض له الدمت صوامع وبيع وصلوات. If not for the fact that Allah made people oppose each other and fight each other, one attacking and one defending. If Allah didn't create this situation, many masjids and places of worship would be destroyed. And Allah will definitely help those who serve Him sincerely. Allah is powerful and He is dominating. In this ayah and in many others in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us there will always be the enemies to the truth. He created them to oppose us. He created them to create a problem. Because, and Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he mentioned this. You know, Ibn Taymiyyah, um, Ahmad ibn Abdul Salam, Ibn Taymiyyah al Harrani, at Dimashqi from Damascus in Syria, this great scholar. He lived at a time when the Mongols destroyed Muslim civilization. They came to Iraq. They took all the books that the Muslim scholars had written and they threw them into the sea until the sea became blue with ink, after it was red with blood. Now one may think, how did Allah destroy this entire ummah, this khilafah, all these millions and millions of Muslims from these Mongols? Ibn Taymiyyah said, when Allah wants to revive Islam, listen carefully to this statement. When Allah wants to revive Islam, He creates enemies to Islam. Because when there are enemies, then Muslims who stand up to defend their faith and they step up. When they feel threatened. And this is why if you go to some Muslim countries, you know, we are now not in a Muslim country. When you go to Muslim countries, you see people generally speaking, they are less religious. They are less keen, the masjids are less full. If you come here at Fajr time to this masjid and you go to a masjid in a Muslim country, you might find this masjid is a lot more full. Why? One of the reasons psychologically is Muslims in Muslim countries, they feel safe. There's no threat. There's nothing to worry about. Here, day in and day out, there's always a threat to your iman. So you are worried. You are, fear, you are in fear. And that's what makes you step up your game. That's what makes you increase your commitment. You know, if you don't increase your commitment, you're going to be finished. You're swimming against the current. You're not swimming with the current. And so this is why the first thing very important to understand, Allah is the most powerful. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes gives power to the zalim, the oppressor. He does. That's his sunnah. And sometimes Allah gives power to the believer. And in both of those is the test. These are the sunan of Allah. He will always create for the believers a group of enemies. To see, because when that situation is created, the real committed believers will shine. Just as in the battle of Ahzab and in many other parts of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proves. 
Only when the believers are really tested with a difficult enemy do the true believers shine. And the fake believers run away from the battle. Today, we are at war. Yes, we are at war. Maybe not a physical war. But Muslims, there is an intellectual war from atheism, from all these liberal ideologies, from these gender ideologies, whether it's at school, whether it's university. We are at war. A war of ideas, not a war of weapons. If it's not you, your children will be victims to this war. And the real question is, who is going to stand up and fight? Who is going to defend their deen with ilm, with basirah, with knowledge and with wisdom and with intelligence? Who is going to defend Islam and who is going to move forward with confidence? And who is going to hide in the corner and who is going to slink away from the battle and say, maybe Islam really isn't the truth? This is where the true believers, the men, get separated from the boys. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes true real men in the Quran, Allah says, من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه. From the believers, some of them were real men, people who were true to the promise they made to Allah. When Allah made them a promise, they trusted in Allah's promise. Even if it took hundreds of years, they're not going to give up. They are patient. When you know Allah is Al Qawi, you know that He might give quwa, power to the person who is not a good person. Yes, Allah gave power to Napoleon Bonaparte and he came to Egypt and he sent his soldiers to urinate in Al-Azhar and in the Masajid of Egypt and burn all the books. Yes, Allah gave power to our enemies. And this question was asked in the Quran by Musa alayhi salam. Rabbi qad aataita fir'aun wa mala'ahu zinatan fil ardi wa amwala. Musa alayhi salam says, Oh Allah, you gave Fir'aun this horrible individual you gave him so much decoration and beauty and wealth. رَبَّنَا لِيُضِلُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ Oh Allah, you gave them all of this and they're going to use it to misguide people. And then Musa alayhi salam makes dua against them. فَطْمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَيْدِيهِمْ حَتَّى يَرَوُ الْعَذَابَ الْأَلِيمِ Oh Allah, I do not have the wealth that they have. It is as though he's saying, Musa is saying, Oh Allah, I don't have the wealth of Fir'aun. I don't have the army of Fir'aun, but I only have you. Oh Allah, you show them the punishment. Oh Allah, you show them your power. And with this little stick of Musa, this Asa, he defeated Fir'aun and his army. The power is not in the tool. We think that if we become engineers, we will be powerful. If we have weapons, we will be powerful. If we have social media, we will be powerful. The power is not in the tool. Musa salam, defeated Fir'aun with a stick. With a stick. It is not about the stick. It is about trusting that Allah is more powerful than our enemies. Remember this moment. As Musa stands on the edge of the sea. And behind him the hooves are slamming on the ground and the dust is in the air as the army of Fir'aun comes close to finish him off. And his people give up. They say, Inna We are finished. We are finished. But Musa alayhi salam, the man with a stick and no army, he says, Kalla inna ma'iya rabbi sayahdeen. No. My Lord is with me. He will show us the way. It is this trust in Allah Al-Qawi is what gave him the strength to split the sea. It is this trust in Allah Al-Qawi that drowned the greatest army the world had ever seen. It is this trust in Allah Al-Qawi that will help us over our enemies in this war that we are in. In this war over our children's iman to preserve the iman of our children, the identity of our children, our salah, our commitment to Allah. It is a war that we have to fight to preserve our identity and protect our iman. And we won't be able to do it with tools, with wealth. We will do it with the help of Al Qawi, Allah, the powerful. It is this belief in the most powerful is what gave the Prophet wasallam the confidence to never compromise on a single letter. When the disbelievers came to him, they said, worship our Lord for one day, we'll worship your Lord for one day. He said, no, lakum deenukum waliyadeen. When they came to him, they said, take some money, take some women, what do you want? He said, no, I don't want anything. It is because he knew Allah is Al-Qawi. 
He is not waiting from some handout from the government. He is not waiting for the liberals to come on his side. He doesn't need the wrong people to be on his side. He just needs Allah on his side. And with that, he was able to completely decimate the Arabian Peninsula and dominate the world. They did it when they believed in Al-Qawi. They didn't do it because of tools. They didn't do it because of degrees. They didn't do it because of anything from this dunya, but because of the strength of their certainty in the promise of Allah. Allah opened for them the dunya. And because we have a weak certainty in Allah, and we have instead a strong certainty in everything else, the dunya has closed up to us. The Prophet ﷺ predicts that in the end of times, the Muslims are going to be weak. Listen to what he says. Hadith of Thawban. He says, يُوشِكُ الْأُمَمْ أَن تَدَاعَ عَلَيْكُمْ كَمَا تَدَاعَ الْأَكْلَةُ إِلَىٰ قَصْعَتِهَا There will come a time when all the nations of the world will overwhelm and consume the Muslims. فَقَالَ قَائِلٌ فَقَالَ قَائِلٌ وَمِنْ قِلَّةٍ نَحْنُ يَوْمَ إِذْ Is it because we will be small in number? When we become losers? When we become consumed and defeated? Is it because we are small in number? Quantity? He says, بَلْ أَنْتُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ كَثِيرٌ No, you will be large in number. We are a billion people today. A billion Muslims in the world. وَلَكِنَّكُمْ غُثَاءٌ كَغُثَاءِ السَّيْلِ But you will be nothing. You will be valueless like the froth of the ocean. وَلَا يَنْزَعَنَّ اللَّهُ مِنْ صُدُورِ عَدُوِكُمُ الْمَهَابَةَ مِنْكُمْ Allah will remove fear of you from your enemies' hearts. They won't be scared of you. وَلَيَقْذِفَنَّ فِي قُلُوبِكُمُ الْوَهَنْ And Allah will put in your hearts humiliation, lowliness, inferiority. You will feel small. فَقَالَ قَائِلُونَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا الْوَهَنْ Somebody asked the Prophet, Oh Rasulullah, what does wahan mean? He says, حُبُّ الدُّنْيَا وَكَرَاهِيَةُ الْمَوْتِ You will become attached to this dunya, this world, and you will become, you will hate to die for the sake of Allah. And perhaps this is our situation today. When we have less trust in Al-Qawi, we begin to have more trust in the quwas, the powers of today, of wealth, of government, of this and of that. And they are not mutually exclusive. One can take the asbab, take the means and trust in Allah, Al-Qawi. I want to mention over here that the Nasr, the power of Allah, it doesn't come for free. It's not something you can get from the thrift store. The help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. When the messengers are about to give up and they think nobody's going to believe. This is the extreme point of desperation. The prophets are about to give up. Imagine. The prophets are about to give up. Then Allah says, جَاءَهُمْ نَصْرُنَا فَنُجِّيَ مَنْ نَشَاءُ Then we help them and we save whoever we wish. وَلَا يُرَدُّ بَأْسُنَا عَنِ الْقَوْمِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ And then nobody can stop us when we come to finish off the criminals. This is the power of Allah, but it requires effort and striving and struggle and sweat and blood and tears from you and me. If we do not sweat for Allah, Allah is not going to help us. Allah, He says with emphasis, I will definitely, 100%, I promise you, I will help those who serve me. Have we sweated for the sake of Allah? Have we ever done anything in our life to deserve the help of Allah? For ourselves, for our children, for our communities. When was the last time we took an hour out to serve Allah? To help the needy, to help the neighbor, to pray Qiyamul Layl, to go and to struggle in the masjid. These are the front lines today that we are fighting. When was the last time we did something? It takes an earthquake for Muslims to spend money for the sake of Allah. It takes people dying. But we will not spend to keep their iman alive. We will not spend on our children's education 
And on the edu- if it's GCSE science tuition, we'll pay 30 pounds an hour. But for Quran tuition, if I have to pay 30 pounds a month, I'm going to fight with the management. We cannot, we don't, we are not willing to spend and sweat and bleed for Allah, but we are willing to sweat and bleed for everything else. Are we surprised? Are we shocked that the help of Allah is never going to come? What have we done to deserve it, my friends? We have to ask ourselves this question. Allah's Allah's nusra, Allah's quwa, his power is not free. It takes, it's an expensive commodity. And we have to pay the price and pay the dues if we want to achieve it and we want to receive it from Allah. And if we do, sincerely, because who doesn't want power? Lut alayhi salam. When all of the people of Lut are outside his door, because they wanted to practice sodomy, they wanted to practice homosexuality with the two angels that came to visit him. And what does Lut alayhi salam say? لو أن لي بكم قوة أو آوي إلى ركن شديد. This is the Prophet of Allah. He says, I wish I had some strength to defend myself. I have no one. What happens two days later? Allah destroys everybody except Lut's house. Yes. Lut had nobody. Yunus in the belly of the whale had nobody. <coughs> Musa alayhi salam had nobody. Salih alayhi salam had nobody. Muhammad alayhi salam had nobody. They had no army. They had nothing but they had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were hungry for power. They wished they could have power. They didn't have it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was there, the all-powerful, to help him. When you realize Allah is Al-Qawi, you start to behave yourself as a Muslim, you start to feel strength in your stride. You have strength in your posture. You have strength when you talk to others. You don't come from a position of weakness ever. Brothers and sisters, we should never ever behave towards other beliefs, other ideologies. We should never feel weak. We should never hide our identity. I'm not saying you go around your workplace, standing on the tables and calling people to salah. That's not what I'm saying. But if someone comes and asks you why you go and pray, you should not say, I went for a walk on my lunch break. Tell them I went to pray. If someone asks you your name, you don't have to say Mo. My name is Muhammad. But you can call me Mo if you struggle. Don't hide. Anta qawi. You are Abdul Qawi. You are the slave of the most strong and powerful. Why are you feeling weak? Where is that coming from? Why are you hiding? Al Qawi. Allah is Al-Qawi, He is never hidden. Huwa Zahir, He is apparent. His evidences are everywhere. Don't hide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks about our relationship with power, Allah says in the Quran, Khudhi al-kitab bin quwah When He's talking to Yahya, take the revelation with strength. What does that mean? That means when you learn about the Quran and what it teaches you, you should never feel weak after that day. You should feel you are intellectually stronger than your opponents. Your iman makes you stronger than everybody else. Allah has thrown into you now a strength and a source of empower, empowerment that can never, has no equation, nothing else can equal it. Today, everybody wants empowerment. Women want empowerment. Children want empowerment. But true empowerment is being empowered by Allah al qawi he says, Khudil kitaba bi take the revelation with strength. When he talks about the Injil and the Torah, he says, Fakhudha bi Take it with strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Baqarah, Khudu ma ataynakum bi take what we have given you with strength. What is Allah saying here? If you believe that Allah is Al Qawi, the All Powerful, then the Qur'an that he gave you and the Sharia that he gave you, the way of life he is giving you is the most powerful way of life imaginable. You should never feel shy about it. You should not need to hide away from it. This is what it means. Understand what is in revelation and act on what is in revelation. It will make you strong. And don't feel weak. And if you feel weak in your identity, You don't feel like telling anybody you're a Muslim. You hide in your workplace. When you go for salah, you scuttle away to the corner. Nobody should know I'm praying. If you have to do that, it means that your relationship with revelation is weak. Because revelation makes you strong. 
Revelation strengthens your identity. Knowing your forefathers, your history strengthens your identity. You will not be hiding. You will be in plain sight. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. This is what it means. When we know Allah is Al-Qawi, we take his revelation with quwa, with strength as well. I want to end today's session with one of the greatest and the most repeated du'as of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One of the greatest du'as a human being can say from their lips. One day, Sunnah Nasai, it is mentioned that a group of companions were on a journey with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every time they went up on a mountain, or in a high place, they would say, Allahu Akbar. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, People, be silent. You don't have to say it so loudly. فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَدْعُونَ أَصَمْ وَلَا غَائِبًا You are not calling somebody who is mute or deaf. وَلَكِنْ تَدْعُونَ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا You are calling somebody who is hearing and seeing. So you don't have to scream. He can hear you even if you are silent. So then some of the Sahaba began to say something quietly by themselves, whisper. The Prophet ﷺ came to one of them, Abdullah ibn Samura, and he heard him saying something. Afwan, Abdullah ibn Qais, and he said, Ya Abdullah, this dua that you are saying is kanzun min kunuz al jannah, it is one of the treasures of paradise. What is that statement? It is la hawla. وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ This word which the Prophet ﷺ would say during the Adhan. This word that he would say before sleeping, and in the morning, and in the evening, and after Salah. It is peppered throughout his life, this statement. But what does it really mean? Al-Hawl, from, a, from the word Hal in Arabic, change. Nothing can change from one situation to another situation. That is, تَغَيُّرُ hal, And no power is given. Meaning power and strength to do good. Or power and strength to repel evil. Or power and strength to be who you are. None of this power is going to come unless it comes from Allah. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. And another hadith the Prophet Wasallam says, whoever says لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله, a house is, or a tree is planted for them in Jannah. Why was this statement so important to the Prophet ﷺ? Why was it such a part of his daily routine? Because on a day-to-day -day basis, you forget. There are moments of weakness. In the battle of Uhud, the Prophet ﷺ was injured and he bled. Ibrahim ﷺ thrown into the fire. Yunus ﷺ in the belly of the... We all have moments of weakness. We have dark and low moments in our lives. And in this moment in time, we lose hope. We forget the promise of Allah. And it is in this time we have to remember this formula. There is nothing that you want to do in your life or I want to do in my life that we will ever succeed if we do not get the strength that Allah will give us. You're going for a job interview. Don't think that listening to metal, hardcore music is going to give you the confidence in the interview. Say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. You're going to meet your first potential spouse, yeah, potential sister or brother you're going to marry, and you're shaking and your sweat has already, you need to have a change of clothes by the time you reach. Say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Your children come home from school and they're confused. They're confused, they think that Allah has a son. That's what they learn in their primary school. And you think, how am I going to deal with this situation? <laughs> Say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. You feel weak, you're ill, you have terminal cancer, you have a terminal illness, your mother or your father is dying on their deathbed, they have, you know, they have hernia in their bones, they can't move. Say, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. This is the formula that brought a small group of Bedouins in the desert to be the kings of civilization. Is the attachment to Allah al qawi from this word, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. When you say it, don't say it quick, say it slowly. Say it from the bottom of your heart. It's not about the quantity, my brothers and my sisters. It's about the depth and the quality with which you say this word. 
And that is why don't forget that this word and this statement, it is a treasure from the treasures of Jannah. Because this is the word, if we really lived by it, it would arrive us at Jannah. We would reach there if we really internalized it. This is the word that was the downfall of Rustum and the downfall of Caesar and the downfall of every empire that stood in front of these Arabs because they didn't have anything, but they had la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Teach it to your children, teach it to your friends. Say it in the car, say it on the commute, say it when you wake and say it when you sleep because we all need that reminder every day. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ بَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ Just one thing before you all go. Next week I'm not going to be here, so we will continue the week after, inshaAllah. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.